Hollow Knight is a peak indie game and Silk Song just released. So I'm making Hollow Knight charms in Minecraft. The first thing I had to figure out was how I was going to make the charms obtainable in Minecraft. In Hollow Knight, you obtain charms through various sources, most of which involve picking up an item from the ground or buying them and the charms menu shows you every single charm you own and every single charm you've equipped. Charms work on a notches system where each charm has a specific number of notches required to use it. This allows you to customize your charm build while still being limited to a certain number of charms. To get this to work in Minecraft, the first thing I did was add a crafting recipe for the charm notch. You start with 3 notches and you can craft more notches up to a total number of 11. Then you craft the charm of your desire with this basic template. It features amethyst at the top, an iron ingot at the bottom, an ender eye in the middle and two other items to the left and right. I will call these two items the materials. The material changes for each charm. Obtaining a charm will show you a brief description of what that charm does. To equip or unequip a charm, you can click on the respective button in the charms menu which you can access through a slash trigger command. Here, it also shows you how many charm notches you've used out of the max charm notches you have. In Hollow Knight, it is possible to achieve a state called Overcharmed, where you get to use more notches than you have at the cost of double damage. I decided to let the player get Overcharmed, but without the downside of double damage. Now I have a system to let the player obtain whatever charm they want and equip it in game. So now I needed to decide what charms I was gonna add. In Hollow Knight, there were a total of 42 unique charms. Using the information in the wiki, I noted down what charms I thought were possible to code in Minecraft. Now I'm gonna showcase every single charm in quick succession. The stalwart shell is bought from Sly the shopkeeper in Dirtmouth for 200 geo. It is crafted with turtle scutes as the material and costs 2 notches to use. With this charm, when recovering from damage, the bearer will remain invincible for 1 extra second. The soul catcher is found at the very end of the ancestral mound after killing the elder boulder. It is crafted with soul lanterns as the material and costs 2 notches to use. It increases the amount of soul gained when striking an enemy with the nail. Shaman Stone is bought from Salubra for 220 Geo in the Forgotten Crossroads. It is crafted with Soul Sand as the material and costs 3 notches to use. It increases spell damage by 33 to 51% depending on the spell. It also increases the size of Vengeful Spirit and Shade Soul. Soul Eater is a much more powerful version of Soul Catcher, costing 4 notches instead of 2 and gaining 8 soul per hit. It requires soul campfires as the material and can be found in a sub area of the resting grounds. Dash Master is found beneath a statue below the Mantis village in the fungal waste. It needs two notches to use and requires rabbit's foot as the material. By using this charm, the bearer will be able to dash more often, perfect for those who want to move around as quickly as possible. Sprint Master is similar to the Dash Master charm but this one increases your base movement speed. It only requires one notch and is bought from Sly. Sprint Master uses diamond boots as the material. Grub Song is one of my personal favorites. It allows you to gain 15 soul when taking damage. It only needs one notch and is gifted by Grub Father after 10 grubs have been freed in Hollow Knight. Grub Song is crafted with glow berries as the material. Next up, we have the Unbreakable Charm. These charms are called unbreakable charms because their fragile counterparts are bought from Leg Eater in the Fungal Waste. The unbreakable versions are obtained from this lady, who produces them through questionable methods. Unbreakable Heart increases your total masks by 2, Unbreakable Greed gives you emeralds when enemies die, and Unbreakable Strength increases your strength by a whopping 50%. Spell Twister is pretty simple to understand. Unlike Soul Catcher or Soul Eater, this one simply reduces the cost of spells from 33 soul to 24. It is found in a hidden room in the Soul Sanctum, 
just before fighting Soul Master. Next, we have the most useless charm in the game, Heavy Blow. This thing is so useless that it is only used in joke charm builds. The charm costs 2 notches and is bought from, you guessed it, Sly. Anyways, this charm allows you to knock enemies further away when you attack them. On the other hand, Quick Slash is a really useful charm. It is found in Kingdom's Edge, south of Oro's hut. It uses 3 notches and shears as the material but allows the bearer to slash much more rapidly with their nail. Long nail costs 2 notches, uses an iron sword as the material and increases the range of your nail. Similarly, Mark of Pride costs 3 notches, uses a trident as the material and further increases the range of your nail. Fury of the Fallen is found in a secret area at the very start of the game. It costs 2 notches and uses nether wart blocks as the material. The charm itself is intended for risk takers as it increases your damage output for 75% when you're close to death. Obviously the charm has to be used with caution but the charm's strength stacks with unbreakable strength which allows you to easily kill a lot of enemies. Thorns of Agony is found in Green Path. It costs one single notch and sprouts vines to attack nearby enemies when you take damage. In my head, the idea of vines damaging nearby enemies sounded similar to the Thorns enchantment so the charm basically became a mini Thorns enchantment in Minecraft. Defender's Crest, despite only costing one notch and a golden chest plate as the material, is pretty useful when combined with other charms. Otherwise, it just summons a lingering cloud of dung which slowly and weakly damages nearby enemies. Quick focus decreases the time taken to charge your focus ability and deep focus heals two masks, but it increases the time taken to charge your focus. Lifeblood Heart and Lifeblood Core add extra absorption hearts to the player when they sleep. Lifeblood Heart requires two notches and Lifeblood Core requires three. While Lifeblood Heart adds two masks, the Lifeblood Core adds four. Joni's blessing was the first big hurdle I faced when coding the charms. All the charm does is removing all of your health and replacing them with lifeblood masks. It also removes your ability to heal. The special thing about this charm is that you get more lifeblood masks if you have more base health. But in Minecraft, Joni's blessing cancels out lifeblood core and lifeblood heart but it provides more hearts for one notch cheaper than the combo. Hive blood is also a complex charm. After taking damage, it waits for 10 seconds to see if you take more damage. If you don't, then it heals the last mask of damage taken without the need of regeneration or focus. However, it costs 4 notches and has the downside of only healing one mask. Sports room is crafted with mushrooms as the material and requires only one notch. The charm summons a cloud of toxic gas after using the focus ability. It pairs with Defender's Crest and Deep Focus to deal more damage in a bigger radius as well. Nailmaster's Glory is crafted with raw iron blocks as the material and only needs one notch to use. It is obtained from Sly after obtaining all three nail arts in Hollow Knight. Wow, this Sly guy sure does have some great nail related charms. It's like he's some sort of nail master or something. The charm increases the bearer's mastery of nail arts, allowing them to focus their power faster and unleash arts sooner. Dream Wielder is also a one notch charm, requiring ender pearls as the material. This charm allows the player to gain more soul by using the dream nail. In Hollow Knight, it is useful in certain boss fights, but it doesn't serve much of a purpose in Minecraft if you don't have the dream nail. Dream Shield is a really complex charm and required me to adapt Hollow Knight's 2D perspective into Minecraft which is a 3D game. In Hollow Knight, Dream Shield is this little shield that rotates around the knight. It attempts to protect the knight and fails but when it succeeds, it deals damage to the enemy and closes for 2 seconds. In Minecraft, the charm rotates 3 blocks in front of you, damaging any enemies it finds within a 1 block radius. Then, it closes itself for about 4 seconds before getting ready to damage enemies again. Grimchild requires 2 notches and is considered to be the child of Grim from the Grim Troop. This little guy has 4 stages. After making this really terrible model on stream on September 4th, which just so happens to be the day of Silk Song, 
I spent way too long figuring out how this guy was gonna follow me around and deal damage to enemies with his little balls. Carefree Melody is basically the other version of Grimchild. In Hollow Knight, you can either complete Grim's Ritual and get the fourth stage of Grimchild, or you can banish the Grim Troop entirely. And your reward for going through these troubles are Grimchild and Carefree Melody respectively. Carefree Melody has a chance to protect you from incoming damage. The longer you take damage without the effect of Carefree Melody activating, the more likely it is for Carefree Melody to activate on the subsequent hit. King Soul is one of the two charms required to get the true ending of Hollow Knight, and two parts of King Soul have to be collected to make the final charm. When you have the full charm, it allows you to slowly absorb the limitless soul contained within. Every two seconds, the charm gives you a total of four soul. But the charm requires five notches, being the most expensive charm in the game, and is pretty useless. But that is intentional game design. Because you're supposed to replace King Soul with the final charm, Void Heart, which is obtained from the Abyss. To get Void Heart, you must have King Soul, and you must go through an important cutscene. This charm is a part of its bearer and cannot be unequipped. In Minecraft, it makes any shade passive to you. And that's all of them. Wow, that was a lot. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to let YouTube know that I should make more of these videos. So I'll be releasing the data pack for free on Modrinth. Check it out. And be sure to check out the full playlist on my YouTube channel as well. Explode. Giant.